Today, I want to make a video that's inspired by a question a friend of mine recently asked me, and that is, hey, fountain pens seem pretty cool, but what should I buy to get started? So today I want to cover what are the top five pens I would buy today um, if I had to start getting into fountain pens all over again. And I'll talk to you about which pens they are and the order that, that I would want to buy them. So I set up this structure. So I'll talk about each of the pens. And then if there's an alternative um, to the pen, I'll mention it and, and why I think it would be an alternative. So let's get started. So if I had to start this hobby over again, the first pen I would buy is the Pilot Varsity. And the reason for that is because it is very inexpensive. It's about $2. It has a very nice steel nib that would feel at home in any pen. But the reason why I would start with this is because writing with fountain pens is different than writing with ball points or, or roller balls or gel pens. You don't really need to put the pressure down when you write. And I would use a pen that I wouldn't be concerned about damaging um, to learn how to use a fountain pen. So this is the Pilot Varsity. And I would start with this pen and use it until I was comfortable with the um, the motion of using a fountain pen. So I wouldn't be worried about damaging the nib. Um, I would use this until I felt comfortable that I, I basically knew how to write with a fountain pen. The alternative to the Pilot Varsity, in my opinion, is the Platinum Preppy. Um, this pen, I don't like the nib as much as the Pilot. Um, which is kind of par for the course, if for those of you know who know me and my my love of pilot pens. But this does have some advantages. Um, it tends to stay inked, or it, what the nib tends to stay uh, wet for longer because it has the slip and seal mechanism, which is basically platinum's um, mechanism to help prevent the nib from drying. And unlike the Varsity, this is a refillable fountain pen, so. In theory, you can continue to use this um, once the initial ink depletes. So first pen I would pick is the Pilot Varsity. The second um, pen I would go for is another Pilot, and that is the Pilot Kakuno. And the reason why I would pick this after the Varsity is because once I get used to um, how fountain pen works. I'm comfortable with the idea of working uh, using a fountain pen. I would want to use a pen with a really good steel nib. And the Kakuno is the least expensive way to get into this steel nib from Pilot, which in my opinion is one of the best steel nibs in the industry. So for 10 to $15, I would buy a Pilot Kakuno just to um, experience what a really good steel nib feels like. And that is why I would pick this pen. I would buy this pen second. Um, and this one's not inked, so oh, excuse me, I'm going to use this Varsity here. Now, an alternative for the Kakuno is the Platinum Cool. The Cool is the least expensive way to get into uh, what I feel is a premium steel nib from Platinum. So earlier we talked about the Preppy, which uses Platinum's very basic steel nib. And this is also the same nib that's used in the Plaisir, which is more of a, a $20 pen. But to get a better nib than this, the least expensive pen in Platinum's range is the Cool. And for the same reason as the Kakuno, if you want to try a really nice steel nib, this is a great option. This is 
um, the Platinum Cool is the pen that will teach you whether you like um, what people refer to as that pencil-like feedback of nibs. The, the steel nib on the Platinum Cool, Platinum Cool, has a lot of pencil-like feedback. Okay, so those are the first pens out of the way. The Varsity to learn how to use a fountain pen, and then the Kakuno or the, the Platinum Cool to experience a really nice steel nib. So now we know how to use a fountain pen. We know what a really good steel nib feels like. The next pen I would buy is the Twisby Eco. I don't love Twisby as a brand. I respect a lot of what Twisby does. Uh, in my opinion, the Eco is the best pen they currently make. Um, it is one of the least expensive pens. I mean, they have less expensive pens in this, um, the Swipe, as well as the Twisby Go. I do not believe either of those are particularly good pens. However, the Eco gives you a lot for the money. So the reason why I would pick this pen after we know how to use a fountain pen, um, you know what a good steel nib feels like, it's pretty difficult to find a really nice twist cap fountain pen at an inexpensive price point. There's um, the only other one I can really think of that's, that's inexpensive is the Pilot 78G. That's not a particularly easy pen to, to get um, in the States. Um, you can buy it off eBay, but you know, not readily available. Um, and that pen is not particularly good in my opinion. This is one of the least expensive ways to experience what a traditional twist cap fountain pen feels like. Also, it is one of the least expensive ways to experience a really good piston fill pen. So this pen has a very nice, easy to use, reliable piston filler. And in my opinion, the next pen um, one should add to the collection is the Eco to learn whether um, you, you prefer having a twist off cap versus a snap cap, and then learning whether you appreciate more advanced filling systems like the piston filler. Personally, I'm not you know, hugely drawn to, to the Twisby Eco, but I had to own this pen to learn that. I had to own this pen to really understand that I don't really care about piston filler systems. I don't really care about back fillers. I don't really care about more advanced filling systems. It doesn't really, you know, it, it doesn't add extra enjoyment for me, but it's something that many of my friends do care about. And this is really the best way, in my opinion, to, to learn that. So pen three is the Twisby Eco. And in my opinion, there really isn't um, a good alternative for this. I think it's this is this is really hands down the best pen to get in order to um, to learn that about fountain pens. All right, the next pen I would buy. So now that we <clears throat> have learned to use fountain pens, we know what a good steel nib feels like. We've tried out a more advanced filling system. The next pen I would buy is the Kaweco Sport. And this is to see whether having pocket pens is something you enjoy. So the Kaweco Sport, very classic looking pen, very small, but once you post it, it actually becomes a really nice sized pen. Um, and I picked this pen because this is a pen that the design has been around for a long time. It's a very, um, very classic looking um, design, a very um, well-known, well-loved, easy to use, not too expensive. Um, so pen choice number four is the Kaweco Sport. 
I have to be honest here. If it were my money, I would probably go with the Pilot Prera. If you've seen my last video, you know this has one of the nicest snap caps in the entire industry. Um, it's also a very nice pocket pen. It's not that much bigger than the Kaweco. It's also very nice posted, but I didn't want to make this list um, all about Pilot. And the other reason um, is that the Prera tends to be a little bit more expensive here in the US than the um, Kaweco Sport. So I'll say the Prera is an alternative um, for, for a nice pocket pen. The other option also from Pilot, if you really want to save some money and see if you like pocket pens, is the Pilot Petite. This is a pen that's not officially available in the US, but it's very easy to get from Amazon, from Jet Pens, from that, that type of store. This one has, still has the price tag on it. I left it on so I could show you. The retail price is 200 yen, which is like $1.50. So this is a very inexpensive pen. It has the same nib as the Pilot Varsity. So it's a very, um, you know, it's gonna perform really well. It has a feed that is transparent, kind of like the Platinum Cool. So as ink goes in, um, the feed section will turn the color of the ink, which is very cool. And this pen is surprisingly comfortable when you post it. It really becomes a nice sized pen for, again, under $2. This is a great, low cost alternative to a pocket pen. So the other alternative here would be the Pilot Petite. I think it's actually called the Petite One. Yeah, see, Petite One. So that would be the fourth pen um, I would pick. So now we have experienced a good nib, uh, advanced filling system, a pocket pen, and the last pen I would put on on this list is the splurge pen. So this would be the first gold nib pen um, and the first really premium pen. And for that, I have to recommend the Pilot Custom 74. This was not my first gold nib fountain pen. Um, my first gold nib pen was the uh, Lamy 2000, but this was the pen that made me really appreciate nice pens. It was the pen that I really appreciated the build quality. I really liked the nib. I really liked the balance. And this was the pen that really made me uh, fall in love with Pilot as a brand. And to this day, it is the pen that I use most in my collection. So that is why um, for the fifth fountain pen, I would recommend the Pilot Custom 74. Now, one alternative would be the Lamy 2000. Um, I do recommend having both of these pens eventually in the collection. If I had to do it over again, I would buy them in the reverse order. So I bought the 2000 first, then the 74. If I had to do it again, I would buy the 74 first. The other alternative is if earlier um, you tried the Platinum Cool and you like the pencil-like feedback of that pen more than the smoother feel of Pilot Nibs, the other alternative would be the Platinum. Because the 3776, because this does give you the pencil-like feel of the nib, but the build quality, in my opinion, is far less than the Pilot Custom 74. So it's an alternative, but in my view, the Pilot 74 is the winner. Okay, so those are the top five pens. I do have one bonus piece of advice for you, and that is, if you watch my other videos, you know that I tend to use gel pens a lot for work. I don't use fountain pens for everything. I use this paper on purpose to show you that fountain pens tend to bleed when you're using inexpensive paper. And it's not, you know, they're not, in, in my opinion, they have their time and place, but not, uh, they're not used, they're not perfect for every situation. So um, given that, 
if you continue to use gel pens quite a bit. I would recommend getting a more premium um, sort of gel pen body, so to speak, to really up your gel pen game. Because what I think you'll find is that you'll, can, you'll get a lot of use out of that. So if you wanted to, to splurge a bit, you could get something like the Lamy 2000 Rollerball, which you could very easily modify to fit um, refills from Uni or Zebra or Pilot in this case. In this case, I have a Pilot uh, Juice refill in here. You could do something similar with a Lamy Swift, with a Lamy Safari Rollerball. Um, my personal favorite is the Uni Jetstream. Um, and I put Zebra refills in here because they're, they're, they're the same size as the Uni refills. And I get a lot of use out of this. So this is number six. This is a bonus. This would be a nice gel pen. Cool. All right. Um, well, so that was it. A pretty quick video today. Um, wanted to thank everybody for watching. This will probably be my last update. Um, for the year as we're uh, approaching Christmas this weekend and um, have some family commitments next week. So I hope everyone has a really nice holiday and a happy new year. And uh, thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.